Justice will reign in God's time. Justice will reign, but until that time, we must challenge every tyrant. And in God's time, justice, justice will reign. In God's time, love will prevail. Love the ones who hate us, and in God's time, love, love will prevail. Let us pray. At the threshold of this holy season, we must lent in place. Our nation is divided, we are sick and dying, and we are desperate for good news. May this simple ritual not only remind us of our weakness, but ensure us of your grace. In the name of Jesus who bore this cross, we pray, amen. amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. But know this, says Yahweh, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Tear open your heart, not your clothes. Return to Yahweh your God, who is gracious and deeply loving as a mother, quick to forgive, abundantly tender-hearted, and relents from inflicting disaster. Who knows? God may come back, relent, and leave a blessing behind. Grain and drink offerings for Yahweh your God. Sound the shofar in Zion, order a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the people, purify the community, Assemble the elders, 
Gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her canopied bed. Let the priests, the ministers of Yahweh, stand weeping between the portico and the altar and say, spare your people, Yahweh. Don't let your heritage become an object of ridicule, a byword for the nations. Don't let the people say, where is their God? Then Yahweh will be stirred on behalf of the land and will take pity on the people. The word of God. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. 
This makes us Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making the appeal directly through us. Therefore, we implore you in Christ's name, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the one who was without sin to be sin, so that by this means, we might become the very holiness of God. As Christ's co-workers, we beg you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For God says through Isaiah, at the acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. The word of God. from the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Beware of practicing your piety before others to attract their attention. If you do this, you will have no reward from your Abba God in heaven. When you do acts of charity, for example, do not have it trumpeted before you. That's what hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. The truth is, they've already received their reward in full. But when you do acts of charity, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Your good deeds must be done in secret. And your Abba God, who sees all that is done in secret, will repay you. And when you pray, don't behave like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing up in synagogues and on street corners for people to see them. The truth is, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go to your room, close the door, and pray to God who is in that secret place and your Abba God, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you fast, don't look depressed like the hypocrites. They deliberately neglect their appearance to let everyone know they are fasting. The truth is, they have already received their reward. But when you fast, Brush your hair and wash your face. Don't let anyone know you're fasting except your Abba God, who sees all that is done in secret, and Abba God, who sees everything that is done in secret, will reward you. 
the word of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christine Godfrey picked up the phone on the third ring last week. She was animated and full of life. And as a result, so was I. All that in spite of physical challenge she's been dealing with for the past several decades. She is an indomitable spirit. I remember meeting her in suite 125 across the hall just prior to an education program, probably three years ago. I was still new in my role here. My name is Christine Godfrey, she said, extending a hand to shake. How about that for a handle? Both names raise expectations sky high. I thought about it. Christine Godfrey. But she said, you just do the best you can. She has not missed a beat since, in spite of surgeries and much loss of mobility. She can still put a positive spin on life as easily as LeBron James can spin a basketball on his fingertip. I'm really looking forward to Lent, she told me, pretty early on in our long chat. I like Lent. She proceeded to say something like, it's a time for real scrutiny, starting over again with some things. We all need to be able to get a fresh start. The reading from the prophet Joel is resounding, a call to action. Return to Yahweh your God, who is gracious and deeply loving as a mother. Quick to forgive, abundantly tender-hearted, and relents from inflicting disaster. Who knows, God may come back and relent and leave a blessing behind. I'm spoiled. My mother left many blessings behind. And if God is as gracious and relenting as she, why would we ever expect anything less from our Creator? I am troubled by by the uh, insinuation that God needs to relent. How can this prophet suggest God would withhold love, be less of a loving God, less of a mother? Do we really think God holds back love to get our attention, to call out the more faithful servant in us? When does God stop blessing us? I think God always blesses. God always is a blessing. Perhaps at the end of our liturgies, we should drop the word may when it comes to the blessing instead of may the creator and redeemer. We should instead announce, you are blessed in the name of the creator, the redeemer and sanctifier. The prophet suggests that God may relent if we return. But shouldn't the spotlight be on us? Aren't we the ones who wandered off, lost our way, 
not forgot, but dismissed our obligations to steward the earth and protect one another. Isn't it we who hold back the blessings? And my confusion surfaced again in the gospel near the end where it read, beware of practicing your piety before others to attract their attention. If you do this, you will have no reward from your Abba God in heaven. What reward would that be? When did unconditional love go out of fashion with God? In this penitential season, it is we who fast and pray to find out what's broken. We test ourselves. We sit with silence to hear what we should have heard already, but it was too noisy. I have already wept and mourned for opportunities I missed. And it would be unhealthy to dwell on those many things any longer. Joel finishes, don't let the nations ask, where is your God? How could a nation ask such a thing if our faithfulness were front and center? Our thanks unceasing, our service to one another unrelenting. If our witness is strong, others will ask, they will take note, they might even come and see. Christine is looking forward to getting back into our space. It might not be a regular occurrence for her and she will need assistance to pull that off but she will come. So great is her love and ad admiration for this community. And because it has been a longer stretch for her, maybe three years since she's been able to come here, I th thought you would like to know that there is one among us who will be cheering us all on for the next 40 days. Every now and then I find myself thinking, if she can do that, why can't I? I ask Christine's pardon if she's embarrassed that I'm putting her in the middle as an example for us all, but I can't help it. She inspires me. So what's up with me this year? Why the rant about relent? Blame it on the pandemic but I'm trying to set the record straight here. Lent is not a time for God to be appeased. It is a time for us to be grateful beyond words, without words, for our Abba Mother. Lent is for us and our reflection. Time for us to fine tune and recount our blessings as gifts for others. It is a time to quote a woman with a godly name for a fresh start. We bless these ashes that faintly recall Jesus triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the supper with his friends, and the judgment and execution that followed. May they remind us that if we are one with Jesus in his death, we shall be one with the Christ in his resurrection. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Amen. Okay. Turn away from sin and believe in the good news. Please.
Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me, uphold me with thy spirit, thy spirit. Then will I teach. Transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto For the unrest in our nation, in Myanmar, India, Haiti, Yemen, and countless other corners of our world, we all need a Lenten break to reassess our ties with one another. Then and only then can we approach our God of many names in a contrite spirit. For healing this spring, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Christine Godfrey, Kathy Camella, Kate Howley, and for others who are in need of healing, strength, or perseverance, the candles we light and the intentions we direct channel the grace of this faithful community. For those most in need among us, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our individual Lenten journeys, we begin with a sign of our mortality traced on our foreheads an outward sign of our inward acceptance, a humble acknowledgement of our utter dependence on God our Mother. May these temporary signs witness our perpetual commitment to scrutiny and an endless procession of fresh starts. For the signs that we are, we pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For any and all who face eviction or loss of utilities in the coldest of months, in the depths of a pandemic, we can resolve this dilemma if only we can muster the will. For compassion sufficient to bring imagination and commitment to the table. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For 
an end to the death penalty in every state. Sound the chauffeur in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the people, purify the community. Let us come finally to our senses for life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for the many, many needs that always come to mind. For these, and for hopes and prayers of refugees everywhere. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of the desert, you guided your people for 40 years, showing the way with cloud and fire. You accompanied Jesus in spirit for 40 days in a deserted place as he prepared to usher in the kingdom. Be with us in our Lenten fast as we are secluded and reluctantly distant from those we love we will continue to be tested. And so we ask for strength. We will arrive at Easter and we will expect to be refreshed. The empty tomb will be filled with light and promise and we will be that much closer to our day of reassembly. Be with us in this meantime and may our intentions and our actions Make these days holy. We pray in all the holy name of God. Amen. Amen. And be blessed in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. In God's time, in God's the, trumpet time will sound, the trumpet will sound, and in God's time, in God's time we will rise. God will ask us then what we've done to build the kingdom, and in God's time we will rise. God will ask us then we've done to build the kingdom and in God's time